Hello Commanders, welcome to Elite Horizons. Yes, we can land on planets. And if you're wondering how the hell that works, well, hopefully the next 20 minutes or so um, will tell you everything you need to know um, for the very basics to get started on uh, planetary landings. Um, right, so the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to get yourself to a starport um, that um, has um, for sale uh, the um, modules that you need for, 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 for fit outfitting a buggy. So when you first get into um, your ship, um, uh, when you're first uh, playing uh, with Horizons um, as part of your game, um, Epic La La Girl, hello to you. That's a great name. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> hey JJ and Fluffy Buns arrived now as well. Um, Alexis too. Um, oh, and now my cat's arrived as well. Hello, Tia. You gonna help? Um, she's gonna sunbathe in front of my light. Don't block the light from the green screen, though, Tia, because you'll give, there'll be a cat-sized hole in my green screen, and we don't want a cat-sized hole in the green screen. If that's okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's gonna give me a shove. Um, right. So you will go in, and you will notice that you have a planetary ap approach suite. Okay, you shouldn't have to buy that. I believe it was just um, as it was just in there for me. Once you've got that planetary um, uh, approach suite, you will then need to buy yourself a planetary vehicle hangar. Now, this is going to have to go into one of your internal compartments. Um, in terms of what size compartment, um, you can get hangers with uh, that, that hold different amounts of SRVs, which is your your buggy basically. Um, and I've got a size 4 compartment um, uh, over to uh, my planetary vehicle hanger and that gives me two. If, I, if you had it in a, two, um, a, a size 2 compartment then you would only be able to ha hold one buggy. And I think, forgive me if I'm wrong people, um, are the, do the bigger ships give you the opportunity to have even bigger um, compartments um, with uh, even more vehicles? I don't know, I haven't got a big ship. Um, Style Please says, will there be more planets to land on or only dead ones? Currently, Style, um, it's only um, atmosphereless moons. So yes, it is only dead ones currently, but this is only the first release in a season of content. Um, and, you know, I suspect that down the line, maybe not this year, it may be in, in other seasons, but I suspect that... Um, atmospheric planets and this is just speculation on my part but I suspect that atmospheric planets will probably be like little mini games on their own right because you're going to have to create you know economies and buildings and so it's I, I would imagine that they will do those as sort of like you know you can go to this planet and do that you can go to this planet and do that I don't know I think um, Oni, thank you very much for the or, or Ogni, thank you much for the follow and also Quark FR and Alexis FR thank you for the follow oh lots of FRs are you all French um, you can buy multiple hangers as well, Millstone says, so I could have more than one um, hanger in there too. So once you've bought your, ha your planetary vehicle, so if you have a look, you know, it, it will be, and I probably don't sell any here at Slough, Slough's not a very good place to kit out your ship, but it will be one of these, it will be one of these items in here. You buy your planetary, um, uh, your, your vehicle hanger, and then you need to buy vehicles to go in to those so you, the first time you do it you'll need to buy um, the vehicles to fit your slots um, so to speak once you have done that brand one five five seven seven thank you for the follow um, JJ thank you like my new hair I've just brushed it out today it's gone a bit whoo um, once, once you've done that, when you then need to, um, when you've then destroyed both of your vehicles, um, you won't have any more vehicles to take uh, onto um, the planet. You need to go to restock, um, and any um, station that has that restock ability. So it doesn't have to be the station that you bought the buggies from. Uh, lots of stations have a restock. And this, if I if I had um, destroyed any of my vehicles, it, they would be down there, and I would have the opportunity to um, restock them uh, for a thousand and thirty credits each. Uh, so that's what you do when you come to uh, restock. So that's you kitted out. That's pretty much all that you need to do in terms of kitting out um, your uh, vehicle. Uh, what you will need to do now, though, is you will need to map your keys. And depending on what, um, uh, depending on the um, uh, the controller setup you have, like I've got a custom control setup because I use HCS voice packs. 
Um, so I've got the keyboard, keyboard and mouse set up and then I've gone through and, and added my own joystick uh, buttons to this. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, once you've got planetary landings um, opened up, you will have new sections underneath that say driving. Okay. Um, now, what you need to go through here, the driving assist is basically auto auto drive. So you set. Oh, ouch! Oh, yeah, this beak has subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much. That's awesome of you. Really good of you. Thank you so much, Channel's Geek. You're wonderful. Um, right. So, um, driving assist is basically uh, um, it's like cruise control. So if you have that, if you have a button assigned to that, then you can set a speed, and it will just go at that speed um, and then you have to sort of like uh, toggle it off um, I don't use uh, drive assist I'd rather be in control of it myself steering axis you'll have to set now I've got my steering axis on my twist to your on so what I've done uh, first of all I went through uh, with a gamepad you can set it up with a gamepad controller if you want to um, you know like the Xbox Xbox one controller or um, you know, or PS4 controller, or whatever gamepad controller uh, is your favoured one. You can set it up with that. I didn't get on with that so much. Plus, when you're going backwards and forwards in the ship, and you've got the other ship's commands and controls, you're kind of then you know going back backwards and forwards between controllers. So I set mine to my my hot ass, and it's really worked well for me. So steering axis is my your axis. Um, so that gives me left and right steering. Um, then this mystery one here <laughs> it's a bug because it's uh, it's beta this what it should say there is roll um, so and I've set that to the roll for my um, uh, for my ship uh, so that gives you the ability to roll when you're in the air um, and then um, you've got obviously all the invert axis on and off depending on what you want to do pitch axis again when you're in the air you can uh, adjust the pitch so I've got that set for my pitch axis um, uh, axis on my um, joystick again exactly the same with with flight um, then you've got vertical thrusters now vertical thrusters originally I had them on the button that is my vertical thrusters for my um, for my ship but actually it works better if you just make the it's basically the boost um, so I've put my boost button on there and it boosts you up it doesn't boost you forward it boosts you up so you get the chance to sort of like fly a little bit so I've just stuck that on my my um, boost button then you've got main weapon joystick one as normal um, the data link scanner allows you it's a bit buggy in, in beta but the data link scanner allows you you'll find certain objects um, as you go on your travels um, uh, yeah, and Heragon has said same setup. Uh, he's also gone for the SRV setup, similar to the bug, so it's easy to switch from bug, from buggy to uh, to, to ship. Um, so the data link scanner, you'll need a button for that um, because that um, allows you to um, to scan scan things and and activate them and do and interact with them. Handbrake, I've actually got my chaff button is my handbrake. Um, on my thumb there so um, and I've just got it as a hold so sometimes when you're sort of like sliding down a slope or whatever or you want to stop suddenly and you just slam the handbrake on headlights I've just left the headlights actually on my um, keyboard on insert I don't, don't need them um, accessible on my joystick um, and then to toggle the SRV turret that is where you go from inside the ship inside the buggy to the the, the turret um, for more um, uh, more precise shooting, um, then I've got that toggled to a button on my joystick as well. Target straight ahead, exactly the same with my um, with my combat um, flight combat. I've got it on my side side button there on my um, on my joystick. Um, then I um, the turret axis again. I've got the, um, the joystick. Um, uh, right and left axis and then um, for th thrust and again yeah because when you're in the turret it kind of like switches to a whole different set of uh, set of control so you can then again remap these drive speed um, I've got that as my thruster and because I use a, a button for backwards uh, you know if you've got a thr my, my thruster um, uh, controller here it doesn't have a sort of a natural sitting point if you're using the thrustmaster hot ass um, it's got a natural midpoint that it sits at, and so you you, you have the full um, uh, full range, and you go forwards and backwards. I have just uh, forward only, and then I've got a button that I hold for reverse. So I've just done that exactly the same um, for my buggy as well. 
then power to engines and again you don't need to change any of this this is this is exactly as before if you've got it on the keyboard setup you can I've also got it on the joystick setup I didn't even change that from um, from how it was um, from from the flight mode um, and again the, the the panels again are exactly the same those automatically I didn't have to to add any of these bits they automatically just carried over from um, the um, uh, from the main um, control um, panel so that's your controls um, I would take a little bit of time and sort of get yourself set, sorted out and settled down um, let's see we've got some comments coming in here Channel's Geek, uh, you can use a controller button as a modifier like X button and left bumper is pretty open slash closed cargo scoop for me. Yeah, and again, I've just got my cargo scoop on my um, on my keyboard. Uh, Quark FR says, you need to set up the, set the setting firing deploys hard points activated and the scanned, activated and the scanned work. Uh, DNA 1000, Kate Kip, along with the data scanner button assignment, you also need to assign it to a fi to fire group 2 from the right hand panel. Uh, it won't scan until you have it in a fire group, as I found out today. Ah, uh, okay, that, maybe that's why I couldn't figure it out, so that's good to know, thank you. Tayamin says, Kate Click, on my X55, I use the bottom wheel on the throttle for forward and reverse, as it has a centre stop. Um, okay, good. So... Um, good good input from you guys as well. Thank you very much for that. So those your controllers, uh, and now uh, if we go over, um, as DNA said, to fire groups, we have no. It's not in there, but maybe I need to be in my buggy for that to uh, to action. You also have. You also have to have the fire activates hard points on. Uh, let's have a look then. Is that in controls here? No. Controls. You need to be in the SRV to, to, to set that um, uh, fire group, DNA said. Fire activates controls. Fire SRV weapon. I don't see where it says fire activates controls. Is it back up in the, um, you mean in the main game controls? It's in the weapon targeting. This is the only problem with this game, I think, is the, um, yeah, I've got that on. Firing deploys hard points is on. That's presumably what you need. What you mean? Um, firing deploys hard points. Okay, so make sure you've got that on as well. Um, okay, so now uh, we are uh, in our ship and we are ready to go. So what we need to do is we need to pick a um, uh, pick a, a moon to land on. Now you can do this from your contacts panel over here, from your navigation panel, and you can see. Where there is that little blue symbol, um, like a ship landed, that means that that's a, 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 um, a place where you can land your vehicle. It is, it is a, uh, a celestial body that you can land on um, be, because it's an airless uh, moon or planet. Um, you can also then see some of them have um, bases on. And I don't think we've got any bases in Vespa M4. Have we? Oh, yeah, so there. And then pa Paragon Holdings that is a basically on that moon that's a base on that moon uh, Pangborn Holdings uh, Vespa M4, Slough, if you look on the map Pangborn is actually a town near Reading uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, very close to Slough so um, thank you very much whoever at Frontier Dev uh, put that little nugget in um, that's very cool of you um, so you can see here now if we go into the galaxy map though you can also see things 
to um, explore via the galaxy map. So if we go into we go into Vespa M4, go into the um, system map, and then you will see here there's now a bunch of extra information around these planets. So you see here where it's a planet with a blue um, line around it, that means it's a, a one that you can land on. Where it's a planet with a blue line around it with these little, um, um, thank you very much for the follow Captain Wow, um, with the three little lines that means there's a base on that planet um, that you can explore. Um, so there's base there, there's a base there, um, and then when you go to the planet, when you go to that um, to that thing, basically there, um, this you've got all the information about that planet there. And where was the information about the bases? Because there are different types of bases, um, and some of them are like heart, um, some of them are like um, um, they are. Um, uh, high um, security bases and stuff and that's actually on this side panel so if you're in a star system and you're looking for somewhere to explore you might see um, uh, you might see uh, a base like that but it will have beside it um, high security so some of these bases are big bases that you can actually attack um, and um, and you get fined um, for going in there. Okay, click. Can we hear Gemma's slough cover later on? Yes, of course. Definitely, uh, per cap. Definitely, we can do that. Um, the amount of controls is daunting to newcomers, I know, because uh, it was to me at first. Sea Biscuit says, yeah, absolutely. It is, but it, you know, it's the, the learning curve. If you don't sort of beat yourself up for trying to know everything all at once, the learning curve of that is actually quite comfortable uh, for when you start. Um, so let's go over to Pangborn Holdings um, and let's um, let's hello. Thank you for the follow, Catalap. Um, so let's lock that destination on. That's within the star system that we're in at the moment, and we will go over to Pangborn Holdings and see uh, what is over there. So um, take off. We've just got two thousand three hundred light years to fly. It's not too far. Okay, you can also zoom into the planet in system map and see the stations on the planet's surface. Uh, ADJ1973 says, excellent, let's have a look at that in a second. Let's just get out of the space station. David Braben is bowing at my, nodding in, in his approval at my methodology for taking off. Um, all right, let's go and have a look at that in the star system, in star map then. Thank you for the follow, PBLK Batusai very good of you so let's go and um, where are we going we're going to here ah look at that and there is Pangborn Holdings um, that is the planet that we're going to oh, I didn't know that thank you very much for that that's a good bit of information so zoom back out and you can see uh, and by the way these so this means these two basically orbit each other they're all orbiting this one and they're all tidally locked I think yeah um, but as well as orbiting this planet these two orbit each other that's what that gray line connecting line there means so when you see things connected together via a gray line it means that they orbit around them so the space station is orbiting that planet these two planets are orbiting each other and everything is orbiting the Sun obviously uh, and these three satellites are just orbiting that and then this gets complicated here because so these two are orbiting each other and that so this might be quite an interesting place to go because we're going to see this orbiting these two orbiting each other and it so anyway <laughs> there's so many interesting things to discover right and and so once we are down on the uh, planet oh, let's we've got a couple of comments here uh, Retmock says, for those uh, who were around a year ago in Cake Click Stream, doesn't this all bring back the memories of those first streams? Kate, explaining the basics of the game. Christmas coming, cold outside. Yay! <laughs> it does actually, it reminds me, it reminds me as well. I can't wait for Christmas. It's gonna be great, we're gonna play loads of games. Yay! Um, right, okay, so. Let's get into Friendship Super Cruise. And, um, Thank you, Doris. 
I'll let Doris stay just until she crashes for the first time, which she inevitably will. Frame shift drive charging. Kirk can't Four, wait for the release. Three, yes, two, indeed, me too. One. For everybody to get, so to get everybody in here, we had so much fun last night. Um, as we head into the planet, what we're going to need to do, we're going to, to be watching out for, as we get closer, the um, the display will change um, uh, to show you that you're entering uh, orbital flight uh, or you're getting close to orbital flight. So as we reach each stage, I'll sort of like stop and explain everything that we are seeing on the screen. So heading in for Pangborn Holdings. It's not going to be too complicated to land at this one and you know like usual on your acceleration there on your speed there if you're in the blue then that's the the best maneuverability you're going to have your quickest turning circle um yes ravenscroft i have tried the ksai voice pack yes he is a beast um cake click doris is for those pilots who like a sense of danger in their lives yes because she's constantly trying to kill you basically <laughs> Thanks, Sea Biscuit. Final Rabbit, hey, how are you? Yes, I've got my Elite Anniversary t shirts on today. Hey, Darla, how are you? Can't wait to land on the planets, he says. I love that in Elite 2. Yay. Right, so I'm, I'm taking it quite slowly. I don't want to rush and do the loop of. Somebody press uh, exclamation mark loop. Somebody type exclamation mark loop into the chat because we came up with a new. Um, Oh, Gwyn McGregor, I do have the Horizons access. After all, it's just masquerading itself as Ships 1.5. Let the end die. Sentry, <laughs> uh, thank you for the follow. Trevor S, thank you for the follow. Um, right, so here we are. Oh, it's a pretty looking moon. So as we get in closer, hopefully, we will see salvageable wreckage. Ooh. We should see the uh, heads up display change soon to tell us that we are approaching. Oh, yeah, so you see the, uh, the blue line came up. That's telling us that when we get inside that, we'll be. So let's get a bit lower. There we are. So this is the first bit that's come. So. What you're seeing there now, Quitter from Texas, thank you for the follow. What we're seeing there now is um, on the right hand side, um, basically a, a, an altimeter bar has come up and we are gradually going down and you see two lines on that. One says OC and the other says DRP. When you get into OC, orbital flight engaged. you are in orbital flight. So we are now flying around the planet and we've got this now bar in the middle that tells us whether we're going so i'm still going down at 15 degrees 10 degrees minus five degrees naught degrees if i keep my control there i will stay at 401 kilometers from the surface of the planet um and i can go round and round and round it this blue zone is your optimal zone for um traversing the orbit of a planet so you can go fastest around I've got no um, no speed on at the moment here, but you can go around the planet the fastest and you'll see it will move quicker. You'll need to adjust quicker because obviously you're going around the curvature of the planet. So if you want to just go round and round a planet um, to your heart's content, you can do that um, just by staying within that blue zone and then keeping an eye on your altimeter on the right hand side, you want to stay between the OC and the DRP markers. Now, when you get to the DRP marker, um, what that is, is that's drop. So you will drop from orbital flight um, and you will go into what they call glide. And glide is the, 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 um, glide is the process by which you um, do your last f uh, five kilometers approach to wherever it is you're trying to get to. So what we're now looking for is I've got my uh, base targeted, um, but currently it's around the other side of the planet. So what I need to do is continue flying around the planet until that comes up in front of me. So until that is in, in front of me. Um, Where is it? Yeah, it's 
all the way around quite it's really cool though isn't it look at that so in fact if i fly this way around then you'll be able to see the planet as well as we go so uh homicide ds thank you for the follow so let's keep going around until we see the place that we're aiming for and of course you can use your head look to get a good view some ships are better for that than others obviously when you say shut up does it mean you want to batten down the ship or something else i didn't say anything doris she's so tetchy so as we go around now We'll see. So as you can imagine, a, a ship that's uh, a planet that is um, orbiting. Once you're in orbital um, cruise, then that's fine. But actually getting into orbital cruise in a sensible and controlled fashion, so that you can do this, um, is is harder. The faster the the, the the planet is basically orbiting, or the moon is orbiting um, its parent. So coming around now it's 2.5 kilometer a million kilometers we should start to see it soon I'm still going down ever so slightly here it is now you can see the dotted thing of Pangborn holding so now we want to go down a little bit now what you will notice as well on the right hand side beside the altimeter there's like a bar with um, lots uh, with uh, it's empty at the moment but it's just got one one thing in the middle that will tell you if you're if you're approaching something too fast that will tell you that you're going to damage yourself it will because it will go red basically it will tell you that your angle of ascent and speed of ascent when that is uh, dangerous so again we want we're still uh, 600 kilometers away so we want to make sure that we don't drop just yet because we want to get within just a few kilometers before we drop so that we don't have to travel too far so keeping an eye on that okay Keeping an eye, keeping an eye, keeping an eye, keeping an eye. There we are, drop from orbital cruise. Now I should glide, hopefully. Your inferior intellect. And there we are, if you wanted. If you wanted to g glide for longer, um, Tor Growl, uh, not right now, uh, in, a, in about another half an hour we're going to do some group stuff. Uh, right now I'm just doing a tutorial which will go on um, go on uh, YouTube for people. So if we'd have wanted, if we'd have come sort of like out a bit uh, earlier, um, we, again you notice that red, that things turned red and blue. If you're in the blue then you can continue to glide safely, uh, but if you spend too long in the red dials, um, then um, you will um, uh, you will drop out of glide, uh, and here we are. We have arrived at Pangborn Holdings. Um, so let's park up. Ah, it's not uh, it's not somewhere that we can um, uh, it's not somewhere that we can um, that we can uh, dock. So there's nothing we can't buy anything here. We can land on the structures if we want, probably, but we can't actually buy anything here we can't dock properly it's just a place to come and visit hang out and have a look so let's just so now the thing is you've got gravity and stuff um, to deal with with these planets so um, you need to be aware that different planets have different uh, gravity and you can see there the gravity here is 0.13 g I believe is that right um, is that underneath so so basically if, if if you want to get friends to find you 
one way of doing it, you can either join um, them um, uh, in a wing and set a wing beacon for them, or see at the bottom of the outer meter there, um, it's got uh, some coordinates, 32.3198 degrees minus 136.6025. That's your latitude and longitude. Um, so people should, in theory, be able to navigate to you via that. Um, and I believe... Okay, uh, we'll we'll go. Um, thank you, Raya. We'll go over. We'll go over to Vespa M four nine C, where there's a bigger city, um, a lot from we de depot where you can dock. But for now, we'll just land on on the surface of the planet. Um, gravity. Some are very serious, while others are more jovial. You're quite right. Um, so now we want to land. So what we've got now, you see, as we've got closer to the ground. Um, the the um, the radar below us changes. We've now we've got the topography. So there now we're back in space. And then if I go down, it turns into the terrain that is underneath us. This will tell you whether or not you are somewhere that you can land. So if I put my landing gear out, if I am over a piece of land that is suitable for terrain, first of all, it would it wouldn't say that unsuitable terrain there, and then the blue dot would go the dot would go blue. So what I need to do is I need to get somewhere there there. So there is let's get out of alignment. We are now over suitable land that is suitable for me to dock this ship. Now the bigger your ship, the bigger patch of flat land you're going to need. So you know if you're going out in your in your anaconda for the first time or your um, uh, your, your your cutter or whatever, then um, you know expect <laughs> to to have to find some time searching uh, for. And now it seems that the flight assist has just naturally got me ready. So so what's what's happened now is I've put my landing gear down and the spot's gone blue bin below me. So I know that it is a good spot for me to land in. Now you can see in the center of your uh, display now, there are some arrows in a line. Those two arrows that are going that way, they're telling me that I need to rotate my ship in order for my alignment. And I love the animation, it goes kind of locks on. And that also happens with the top up and down. So if you've got those uh, arrows are going up that means you need to tilt up and then when you are perfectly aligned both uh, in your um, uh, horizontally and vertically then you get that alignment okay and you are now free to just use your um, uh, down thrusters and and um, by the way you'll notice as well that the ship has turned blue everything's turned blue because I'm okay to now land so I will um, just gently set her down and again, you can see the altimeter on the, on the bottom there, on the right-hand side, that was telling me how close I was to the ground. So, um, yeah, the interface de design is awesome, isn't it? So now we are, um, we are on the ground. We are on this moon. We have parked our, uh, I'm in a Viper Mark IV, uh, just a little way off from the base. Uh, and you can see landing gear down, and we are all ready to get our ship out. I could have chosen actually. <laughs> it's, it's it's dark so you can't actually see much which isn't really helpful is it? Uh, right so now we want to get out of the ship. So what we do is we look down and so this is your, your, um, uh, your um, um, center panel it's looking down over the crotch panel as people have been dubbing it um, and we now have the opportunity to deploy our vehicle. So we just click deploy vehicle. Um, and in Musis ports, um, people do play this game without a joystick and lots of people who are good with keyboard and mouse really enjoy it. Um, I wouldn't want to play it without a joystick, to be honest. It's much, much, much more pleasant for me to play with a, with a joystick. So we are now on the ground um, in our buggy. Again, have a look outside and see what is going on. Oh, I am I'm below the surface. My camera is below the surface. Uh, there we are. So that's me now out beside my um, beside my ship in my buggy. SRV. All right. I'm not allowed to call them buggies. Now you've got two layers of lights. You can all four lights, no lights, 
dip lights kind of do. So you've got your kind of like your search light scenario. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to go with full lights for, for now. Um, now, what we have here now, basically, having mapped my controls, um, this was the turret. So you go into the turret. Uh, uh, no, that's why, because I'm too close to my ship. Um, so if you're too close to your ship, then um, you can't uh, activate your weapons. So, But what we can do now is we can dismiss the ship. Um, and our ship will just fly off on its merry way. There she goes. And she's gone back up into orbit uh, to await me calling her. And your ship is not vulnerable when it's in orbit on its own, I believe. Uh, the, we've, we've been testing it and we believe that it's not vulnerable. Right, so now, if I wanted to go into turret mode, there's my turret mode, that's the button that, um, that I uh, pressed uh, that I assigned to it. Um, you don't have to be in tur turret mode in order to fire, you can just fire um, at will where you are. Uh, and if you've got a target obviously locked on then it's, uh, to a certain extent it will uh, it will gimbal to the target. Um, so driving around, basically you will take damage if you uh, land too heavily. So if we boost, have a look on the right hand side that sort of like the damage indicator line that comes up basically that's now went red that means I'm going to take damage when I land the the atmosphere is too heavy uh, with this really for for me to um to, to to jump too high so but that will tell you if you jump really high and that you get red lines on that that means you're going to damage yourself uh, when you land so you basically should um, pump your um, thrusters just a little so that it doesn't do that damage. You see there I took 1% damage there. So that's your, and, and once you're sort of like airborne you can do rolls, try and land on your wheels. <laughs> you can also do loop the loops. If we had less atmosphere then it would be a little bit easier to show you the tricks but you can do all sorts of really funky All sorts of really funky things. Handbrake. Okay, so that's you on the ground and starting to uh, drive around. Whoever all, Kate Hick, put full pips to engines. Oh yes, yes, you mustn't forget, like I always do. You mustn't forget the pips things, because that, yeah, that's gonna give me much more. There we are. I've got much more thrust now. Oops. Uh, yes, exactly. I needed to uh, suck on my nose. Oh yeah. Um, okay, click put four person. The gravity is there. It's fine to be able to do. Yeah, it should. Be. Yeah, exactly. It's only one point three, isn't it? Whee! So you can see now, I'm coming down, and it's oh, it's in the red. I'm gonna damage myself. So that's what you're looking out for. Um, you know, the ideal thing for me not to damage myself would have been to go. Whee, I'm coming down and then I need to save a little bit of a uh, and just little taps on the thruster just so that you land a bit more gently okay so now we need to look for some resources and you will see the scanner in the front and if we listen very carefully you can hear a Geiger counter noise that's telling me that there is something that uh, I can find now if it's only um, taking up the lower half of the screen then it will be a resource a rock that you can mine uh, if it's taking up all four like maybe over here I don't know that might be the base that we've just come from if it's taking up all the the top of the screen as well that means it's something bigger you know it's like a ship or a satellite or something this may be this the the base that we just came from but let's go and have a look so head towards it basically there are two different types of noises there's a Geiger counter noise which, um, ah, it's a defence turret. Yeah, this is the base that we just came from. Um, there are two different types of noise. There's the Geiger counter noise, which means, I think it's uh, something with uh, metals. Uh, lines at the top equal of scanner equal artificial sources. Lines at the bottom are natural resources. Thank you very much. Uh, whoever, whoever, one, one, whoever, one, one. 
so yeah so what we've done is we found the base that we just came from which wasn't very clever on us um, and there are two different types of noises the, the Geiger counter noise is metal based resources I believe uh, it, is that right no is is um, mineral based resources and then there's a white noise kind of a and that's um, and that's metal based resources I think that's the right way around it is if somebody could um, could uh, confirm that in chat that would be good so what we're doing now is we're, we want to try and keep the, the strongest signal in the front now there's quite a lot of signals so there may be several rocks scattered about so just drive towards them until these those start separating out into individual um, uh, individual uh, signals now, you do have to drive for quite a while once you get the 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 beeper starting on the map um, you can see I'm still driving relatively fast and it's it's longer than you think it takes you it takes longer than you think to get to the resource um, that you're looking for um, but you will know when you get to it because all of these rocks they all look the same and then you'll see a rock that looks different and you can target it and that that means that it's a, a resource that you can um, you can uh, harvest uh, whoever all says three lines equals bronzite condite so whoever all seems to know uh, a lot about the, uh, the the harvesting of resources thank you um, and there's going to be loads and loads of information on that how a warrior thank you H hobo warrior thank you for the follow so we're still now so you can see now they're beginning to separate out into individual ones so let's pick one and head to it there so we just want that ah, ah, there it is you see we just want that in the center and there is our rock you can target it it's bronze cordite so I've targeted it I shoot it and three items go flying off into uh, the um, into the space so now we open our cargo hatch which I had on uh, the same cargo hatch button and you don't need to be careful or grab things carefully you just need to drive over them and um, you, it will tell you what you've picked up uh, commander compound Khan thank you for the follow uh, so that's phosphorus and when you pick up a new material that you haven't picked up before you'll get discovery points for it as well there's one more piece there mineral iron um, and I'll tell you what you can do with these in just a moment so we pick up the iron as well okay and now we go to find the next thing and don't forget we you know the, the the scanners work over a long distance so that big scan that we're seeing over there was probably where we just came from and let's go for another rock now one in that direction so i hope that's making sense that you can gradually track down these that's rocks an excellent use of my immense processing power well done um, Asteria uh, is asking do you get a good return when you sell these I don't think these are for selling are they these you need these to do um, to um, to do upgrades and repairs and refuel your buggy basically these are resources that you'll use to um, to maintain your buggy and that's um carbon right so it's just for crafting so what we got now ah fire group we need to put the data link into a fire group there we go good um so now if we go to cargo you'll see what materials you've collected and then the synthesis is what you can do with those materials so um you can see there to restock uh the ammo you can do that, repair, refuel. Um, you've got and various different upgrades to um, your buggy um, for various different materials. So for an FSD injection, you need vandium and geranium. Those are two fairly rare finds. I haven't got any of them yet. Um, and I guess that the, so these these are upgrades that you do on your ship. Um, these ones 
and these ones are are, are are how you maintain your buggy so you know if we had um uh, well, when we've um nearly uh, run out of hull because we've been driving like a crazy thing then we click on that and you click repair srv hull and it will use uh, two iron and one nickel um in order to uh, do a repair on the hull i don't need to do that yet because i'm still at um something like uh 90% which is unusual for me <laughs> so uh, Kate says geranium she means germanium <laughs> did I say geranium <laughs> oops um, okay any questions have I not covered anything I'm just going to search for a few more resources um, and and you know there's apparently there's all sorts of things you can discover we discovered a, a, a fallen satellite um, which you then had to turn on and I guess there's going to be missions for you to find things and then turn things on and turn things off um, and they're procedurally generated so ah I quit my pants Kate click I'm at a bit of salvage if you want to uh, show the viewers right cool okay let's um let me get in a um it's vapes a lot isn't it let me get in a let me get in a wing with Vapes a lot so that I can find him. Are you going to start uh, Ravencroft. Also, if you got lost in your ways back to your ship, I've seen that your ship can pick you up. Yes, exactly. So basically, um, now what I could do, if I wanted to, to uh, repair my ship without using any of my resources, repair my buggy without using any of my resources, because the moment you dock in your ship, um, you get full repaired and full fuel, um, I could recall my ship and my ship would come down to me and we'll show you that in a moment um, the ship would come down to me um, and um, then uh, we board so let's uh, head over to Vapes a lot now who is three kilometers away and he's found a nice uh, bit of salvage wreckage for us so let's go and have a look what that looks like and we should be able to see it start to um, come through on um Whee! we should see it start to come through on the scanner as we get closer you need to be careful because um, I don't know if it's a if it's a beta thing or a deliberate thing but if you're going flat out speed and you do what looks to you like a really gentle little jump sometimes you can just you can go from 90% hull to exploded in like one tap that happened to me a few times it's, yesterday it's yeah. just a beta bug it's a beta bug is it yeah okay cool um, but you you know take it easy when I think if you're going at full speed you could do quite a lot of damage without even realizing it because even though you've got full shields your hull will get battered um, your shields will protect you from uh, weaponry and from uh, ramming from other uh, vehicles which is why we turn them off for the demo derby but um, your um, uh, your hull will get damaged uh, and chipped away and before you know it you'll look down and you'll be like oh damn <laughs> I've got 0% hull and I've just exploded when you explode you don't have a buggy anymore unless you've got two buggies in your hold um, you have to then go back to the space station and restock your buggy so it is a bit of a pain because you've then got to go and find everybody if you're out adventuring with pals you've then got to go and find everybody as well uh, he's two kilometers away so I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, fly over to him in my spaceship so we recall ship and we should see our ship wherever it comes down they often, there it is no that's millstone barn so what I can do now is um, oh Sounded like my ship landed really close to me there. Did sound like it did. There it is. Um, often lands about, well, it'll land, it needs to find a, a spot that's safe to land. It often lands about 500 metres to a kilometre away from you. So you'll need to, to drive a little bit to go and pick it up. Check in debug cam. Yes, I should have done. I should have done. Uh, if you're running low on fuel, make sure you have enough fuel to drive to your ship. 
don't want to run out of fuel. No, you don't want to do a mad dog. He's stranded. I wonder if the fuel rats are going to be able to come and rescue people on planets as well. Does the does the refueling um, units work for uh, buggies, do you think? Right, so now, to get into the ship, what we're doing is we drive into this zone, and you see on the right-hand side... Oh, I've still got my cargo scoop out. Um, you see on the right hand side, underneath there, board ship, underneath my fuel gauge, that blue light come, came on to say board ship now. I'm put my cargo scoop away. I don't know why my cargo scoop won't go away. So you just drive forwards until that lights up. Bam, like that. And now I can go down and select board ship and I get taken out. Now, again, in beta, it's been bugging sometimes and it looks like the, the hatch isn't open, but if you drive into the right position, you'll get that blue um, light and um, fuel rats will need a desert rats decision, says Chonty Campbell, yeah. Okay, so now we're back in the ship. Um, what I can do is uh, target my, um, my wingman. I'm gonna take off first. So you need to hold uh, vertical because it needs to uh, your engine needs to spool up. Uh, get rid of that, and now we target vapes a lot, and let's head over to where he is, and he has a uh, an interesting. wasn't very far from us. Your ship moves a lot faster than... So... Let's head over here. Not land on the wreckage. Head down. Put our landing gear out. correct there we are there's a bit of a an incline but there we are we're down that's the beauty of a small ship is you can land them on slightly uh, obviously more um, challenging terrain let's hope I can get out <laughs> there we are and wheels deploy and so where is this uh, wreckage demon um, thank you for the follow So you can see on the radar, that's the big smudge. There he is. It's all four layers high. So as we drive down towards it, here is the wreckage. Can we scan it? Stone barn is the only thing I can target on at the moment. It's 
an elite shopping trolley. So there's all sorts of interesting things that you can find when you're out and about. Some of them are salvageable, some of them you can interact with, and some of them will be uh, associated with missions, I'm sure. Um, and also you can attack bases, and you know some of the bases uh, you can actually uh, mount an assault on um, and try and destroy them as well. So there's a ton of stuff that you can do um, right now, and this is just like the first iteration, and um, this is when you buy the Horizons upgrade, you uh, basically will get a whole season of content throughout the year, so they'll be adding more to it. I don't know when they're going to add atmosphere planets, but I know that it is certainly in the game plan um, in the um, uh, you know in the medium term anyway. Um, so we'll have to see what that is. But in the meantime, there's a ton of stuff that you can do, even though not all of it is official. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a quick break now. Um, it's it's ten past five. I'm going to take a quick break now, and I'm going to play you. Um, uh, basically, uh, zombie was uh, with us last night. We had the first uh, demolition derby, uh, and um, zombie very kindly um, videoed it for us um, from external camera uh, view. Um, and so this is one of the things that you can do. Um, just with your friends to have fun. I'm gonna have a quick break. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, get a new drink because my coffee's gone cold, um, and um, and then when I come back, we will find a good spot somewhere to uh, do our game that we were inventing last night, which is another great way that you can um, uh, entertain yourself um, outside of the the, the 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 scenarios that the game gives you. Um, but first, um, have a watch of this. Enjoy. This is what we were doing last night. Demolition Derby. We're gonna be doing lots of these. Um, and um, I will um, I'll be back to you in a few uh, minutes um, to continue with our adventures in Vespa M4. Enjoy. <laughs> 